Okay, so you got swap, duplicate, now we can manipulate the stack. So let's get on to what you typically assume you would know on a regular programming language. So a big one would be print statements, right? You want to print some text out to the user. The way you do it in fourth is with emit. So emit will take the first number and uh, put nothing on the stack, but it will print. All right, so that's emit, but it, uh, it'll print the ASCII code. So how do we get an ASCII code? Here's a fun quick tip, totally unrelated to fourth. If you bring up your shell um, and you go man ASCII, you can bring up the man page for ASCII and within here, and it's formatted super bad because I made my text super large, but uh, you can see all the ASCII numbers for all these various uh, letters. So let's see here, even just G looks to be 71 in decimal. So we'll just 71 emit should. I was playing around with the emit earlier. So we'll put 71 on the stack and we'll emit. And boom, look at that. Beautiful. There's a G right there. You can also do it in line like that. Another quick thing is CR. This is the carriage return it will uh, just print a new line. CR, I don't know, 200 dot CR, 420 dot, and look, we got them coming under as new lines. Makes sense, right? So the dot prints whatever, emit prints it as an ASCII character, CR prints a new line. Easy peasy shampoo squeezy. All right, now, conditionals you know, true, false, Boolean algebra. What are you going to do about it? In fourth, everything false is zero, and true is anything else, but usually minus one. This is what they use for minus one. So, uh, you can write, I don't know, four, four equals. This will give you, let's just see, let's see, four, four, and equals. Let's see what's on top of the stack, minus one, because that's true. Four, five equals top of the stack, that's a zero, because that is false. So that's a conditional, and naturally it works for greater than, less than, stuff like that. All right, now time to get into the big sauce. This is what everyone thinks programming is, and that's the if and the else, the if statement, the conditional, the conditional. So we can have it is 5 as a function, so that's defining a new function. And remember, ifs can only be used inside of function or, or definitions. These aren't necessarily functions, but ifs can only be used inside of definitions. They have to be compiled. So, for example, is 5, add 5 to whatever's on the stack, and then do an equal. And now we have a condition to check. If that is the case, then we should emit something. We should emit a G, right? We should emit a G. What was a G again? 71, yeah. So is 5 emits a G. So 75 emit. And then you write then. All right? The way then works in fourth is like a sarcastic, like teenager saying it. Like, oh, like if 71 emit then. It's like a do it then. It's not a then do something. It's mm, then, you know? Eat it then. Like, stop talking to me. That's basically how you use uh, emit. So we can come down here and paste it in. And so that says OK. And now let's see. 5 is 5. G. G, that means good. I mean, I'm just saying that it means good. And then you can say 6 is 5. No G. No G. What if I actually wanted a different, uh, something else, right? Else's. So if 5, then emit the G. But if it's not, if it's not, we can just write else. And we'll emit an H. It's, or maybe not an H. I don't know. 
What's it? What's it be? What's it be? What is a B? A B is 66. I had a feeling it was 66. I had a feeling. Okay, so then we're going to emit 66. Let me just come here. We already know that one. 6 is 5. B, bad. It's bad, okay? Bokeh. There we go. That's the conditionals. So the then is like. You know, it ends the if then. Finally, looping. Just bear with me here. Looping. Here we go. What do you want to do when you're looping? You take a beginning index, an end index, and a, a variable of that index. So the way you do it here is you, uh, again, also have to put it in a definition. So let's define something. Uh, six G's. Here's six G's. How much is six G's? So what you go is, you say the end, the beginning. So zero to six, or it should be one to six, right? And you say do, and you have I, which is the index. Or uh, I'm gonna say we do this loop at the end. So that's like the then of the looping. So you write do the thing, and then the word uh, the word loop. So if we come down here and paste that in, then we write six G's, it's gonna say one, two, three, four, five, right? Because that's the, the it incremented over that. So naturally I should have started this at zero and instead of doing that I want to say 71 a minute. So I want it to actually say um, six G's. So let's paste that in and six G's. Boom. G -g 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 -g. So fun stuff, good stuff, great stuff. You can also real quick have a full string literal by using dot quote below there, let's say for instance. So you can do something like that instead, which is easier to write than uh, all the ASCII codes. So we can, so it'll just output hello there. That's the dot quote, kind of a nice little fourth ability. All right, now that we've done it, let's create a classic landmark computer science program for great good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create FizzBuzz, the classic. And if you want, you can pause the video and try to write your own FizzBuzz. We already learned a lot of stuff here. We went through a lot of stuff here, so you probably could do it. But let's, uh, if you don't want to, just want to stay around for the show. And let's say Fizz. Let's do Buzz. Which one's Fizz Buzz? Number is divided by three, which we're going to need a new operator for, which is the modulo, which is pretty simple to use. You just write a number, another number. What's this going to be, crowd? What's it going to be? It's one. Four minus three is one. Of course. Of course. You add one, you get four back. You add one, you get four back. So what's um, seven mod three? It's one. It's one, right? It's six. Add one. Come on, man. Come on. So that's how you use mod. So let's go back here. But we don't want to provide the first arguments provided to us. So we're just going to check if it's mod five mod and then this is either going to be zero or not so we want to add a zero right so this this will be some number mod and then if it is a divisible by five that number is going to be zero so since that number is going to be zero let's compare that number to zero yeah so if it is divisible by five if that if it's true then write buzz this is the same syntax from up here this is the same as pushing all those as ASCII characters and printing them all one by one using commit. And how do we end it? Then, right? Print buzz then, you know? So there's buzz. Let's try it, let's try it. So, 
let's give them a six buzz undefined word right because we never pasted it in right 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 okay now six buzz hmm of course it's not but it, if I buzz on five we do buzz on five what do you know beautiful but what's the problem here we've messed up the stack we've with our if we've taken the if off the stack which is fine for now but it'll prove to be a problem later so let's do the same thing but for fizz and so this is just going to be a three and we're just going to change that to fizz nice so we have a fizz we have buzz good stuff now we just want to have a fizz buzz right so fizz buzz would be fizz buzz would be a fizz and buzz if both of these happen right so remember the inputs always going to be a number right so if the input is 15 what happens well we have a 15 so we would have to check if it fizzes and then we have to check if it buzzes so let's write fizz and that should check the number right and then oh what's the problem we can't write buzz anymore because fizz ate the 15 it's like okay it's mine we took the 15 off which is which is uh you know what it's supposed to do it's supposed to consume the stack but we don't want to get rid of the number just after checking fizz so let's duplicate it first so we'll duplicate then fizz then we can buzz right all right so that's fizz buzz now we just need a final function to tell us uh, all the fizz buzzes up to a certain point right so that'll be a simple loop so we want the user to provide the end of the loop so let's just make a new procedure here. So get job at Google, because this is for sure going to get you that job at Google. So you have the beginning. They provide the end. We provide the beginning. Loop construct, remember, do the thing we're going to do. First, let's just uh, output the number itself, then duplicate the number, then uh, run fizzbuzz on it. And that's it. That's it. And it like that. There we go. That should be getting a job at Google, don't you think? Boom. Then I write, let's say, 420. Get. That's a bit. That's a bit high. Um, get job at Google at 20. Let's just do 20. I mean that looks okay, but but I think we can do better. I think we can print it once so that we know what number it is because that actually just feels kind of silly. Ready? Ready? Look at that. Look at that. See here? See here? Fizz? Buzz at five, six fizz, seven, eight, nine, nothing, nine fizz, ten buzz. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Fifteen. Fifteen fizz buzz. Amazing. There you have it. Intro to fourth. You should go learn some fourth. I'll leave some links of cool fourth resources in the description. Thank you. And uh, let's piece it. Now that you've improved your fourth knowledge, you should go forth and feel good about it. Cause you just learned that stack based computation. Sir, that's in your brain like a raisin. Is how it look like if we were playing, but we ain't friggin' playing. We're playing with stacks forth, back and forth. You should only code. Of course, and four, and four.